So we've introduced the extended fin example as a way to illustrate some of these properties and methods that we're going to use on more complicated multidimensional problems in the future. It's a one-dimensional second-order ODE that governs the heat transfer in the extended fin. We saw that we obtained a tridiagonal system of equations to solve. We then took a little bit of a detour to discuss some properties and the Thomas algorithm for solving that. And now we want to come back to this extended fin example and address something that we've left hanging, and that is the boundary condition at the tip. In our first implementation of this, we assumed that we knew the temperature at the base of the fin and the tip of the fin. It's certainly not unusual, and you'd expect to know the temperature at the base of the fin, because you know the temperature of the thing, the chip, whatever it is that you're drawing the heat away from. But the Dearsley boundary condition fixed specified temperature at the tip of the fin is not a very physical boundary condition. So here we want to look at a more natural, more physical boundary condition, and that is the convection boundary condition. And that's going to allow us to discuss more general boundary conditions and how we incorporate those into the finite difference method that we've been discussing. So rather than the Dirichlet boundary condition that we had previously, we're now going to have a convection condition that looks like this. This is being applied at the tip, so at x is equal to L, and expresses the fact that the heat conducting out of the tip, according to Fourier's law, is equal to the heat that's being convected away from the tip, which is h times the difference in temperature. So this is minus k times the gradient of the temperature. That's the heat flux out of the tip. Again, according to Fourier's law, k is the thermal conductivity or property of the fin material. So this is our boundary condition. And as we did before, we want to change our variable from t to u. So u is capital T minus t infinity. That's the ambient temperature of the fluid that's flowing past and cooling the extended fin. And that gives us our new dependent variable u as a function of x. When we do that, this becomes u at the tip. And dt dx, well, that's just du dx again at the tip. Now you'll notice the difference now is, whereas before we had u at L being specified as a number, that was the temperature of the tip, now we have a linear combination of u and its derivative, which is the heat flux out of the tip. So we now have what we'll call a mixed or a Robin boundary condition that incorporates a linear combination of u and du dx at, in this case, the tip of the fin. So a fixed boundary condition is Dirichlet, a derivative boundary condition is called a Neumann, and a mixed boundary condition where we have both u and du dx is called a Robin boundary condition. So in a general form, we'll write it this way. p times u plus q times du dx is equal to r at the boundary, in this case the tip. So we have the p, which here is h, the q, which here is k, and the r, which here is just zero for the convection condition. But we'll use this more general form in our preceding discussion. So the question is, how do we then incorporate this into our finite difference algorithm? You remember before we knew what u at L was. We didn't have to solve for it, so our last equation was for u sub capital I, because we knew u sub capital I plus one at the tip. Now we do not. We do not know u at the tip, so that becomes an additional unknown. What equation do we solve for that unknown? All right, so let's run through the process. We'll do it for this particular extended fin example, but we'll use the same exact approach, same exact method, when we deal with more complicated multi-dimensional problems in the future using finite difference methods. So the first step, is to apply the difference equation at the boundary. So we're going to apply our general difference equation when little i is capital I plus 1. So then we have u sub i, u sub cap i plus 1, u sub cap i plus 2, and the corresponding coefficients a, b, c, and d. OK, that's just our general finite difference equation, which applies everywhere across the domain. So it also has to apply at the boundary. What you'll notice is there's a point here that's outside the boundary. So if this is the boundary, which corresponds to capital I plus 1, we have the point inside, capital I, and a point outside, capital I plus 2, that are all delta x away. So the issue now is this point, capital I plus 2, well, that doesn't exist. It's outside the domain. Some people call it a ghost point. So we need to eliminate this in some way. So how do we do that? So we also have the boundary condition. So let's apply the boundary condition at the boundary, capital I plus 1, and see if that helps us. So we have P times U sub capital I plus 1 
plus q times ui plus two minus ui over two delta x. So that's the second order accurate central difference approximation to the first derivative du dx applied at the boundary is equal to r. Well, you'll notice this approximation also has this point outside the domain, this u sub cap i plus two outside the domain. So let's solve this equation for u sub i plus two, and we get this expression. And you'll notice everything on the right-hand side is known. It's all values and points that we know or are already in the interior. Then we can substitute that back into our difference equation in order to eliminate this u sub i plus two value. So we do that and gather up the terms. We have everything times u sub i, everything times u sub i plus one, and then everything that's known goes on the right hand side. So this then is an additional equation that we have to append, add to the end of our system of linear algebraic equations. So before we had for two through capital I, the interior points, now we have an additional unknown at capital I plus one. We then have this equation to append. So we have capital I equations for capital I unknowns. And you'll notice what that looks like in the tridiagonal system is we just have different coefficients on these two terms. So we have to modify the A's and the B's and the D's that we had specified previously to be this, this, and this respectively. So that's all we have to do is modify the A, B, and D to incorporate these new coefficients of the UI, UI plus one, and the right-hand side terms. So that's it. So we apply the difference equation at the boundary. We apply the boundary condition at the boundary using appropriate finite differencing, solve for the unknown value, and then substitute that back into the difference equation to eliminate it to give us an additional equation for the additional unknown that we now have. Now this is a heat transfer problem. So something that we would like to know typically would be the heat flux, how much heat is being conducted out of the base of the fin into the fin from say the hot computer chip that we're trying to cool. So let's think about how we would do that. So we want an expression for the heat flux. The heat flux according to Fourier's law on heat conduction heat transfer is Q is equal to minus K times the cross-sectional area. This is applied at X is equal to zero times the gradient of the temperature at the base DT DX. In terms of U, it looks exactly the same, just U instead of T. So then the question is, in order to evaluate this heat flux, how do we evaluate the du dx? Now remember, this is at the base. So i is equal to one corresponds to x is equal to zero. And then we have two, three moving out from the base. So now the question is, how do we approximate du dx? If I were to use our preferred second order accurate central difference approximation for the first derivative, that would involve this point minus this point outside the domain divided by two delta x. Well, we don't have this point, nor do we want this point, so that's not really an option. So the alternative is to use our forward difference approximations. So you may have wondered in a previous video, why did we even have forward and backward differences? Why not just always use central differences? Well, here's a case where we need those forward differences. So the forward difference, we use values at the boundary, next point in, next point in, and however many we need, in order to get the order of the approximation that we want. So let me show you three. So here's the first order accurate approximation for the du dx at the base. We derived this in a previous video. It's u2 minus u1 over delta x. So this value minus this value divided by the distance between them, which is delta x. That of course is only first order accurate. It's only order delta x. A second order accurate approximation, which we also derived using Taylor series, the same derivative du dx at the base, x is equal to zero, would be minus three u1 plus four u2 minus u3 divided by two delta x. Again, we derived that formally using Taylor series expansions. That is a second order, an order delta x squared approximation of the first derivative using this point, this point, and this point. So it's still a forward difference. In order to get a higher order approximation, we need to include an additional point. And we could continue. So a third order accurate finite difference approximation, which would be this, which we have not derived, is minus 11u1 plus 18u2 minus 9u3 plus 2u4 divided by six delta x 
That is a third order approximation for the first derivative. And once again, you'll notice it involves an additional point. So every time we increase the order of the approximation, we need an additional point in order to get that approximation. So we could use and we could compare the first, second, and third order approximations for the heat flux at the base of the fin if we had a numerical solution for our tridiagonal system of equations with the u's all the way across. We would only need the first two, three, or four of those u's to obtain the heat flux into the base of the fin. Now you notice even though we only need two, three, or four values of u, we need the entire solution all the way across the domain in order to get the solution for these and therefore approximate the heat flux. But you will notice as you increase the order of the approximation, you will get more and more accurate approximations for the heat flux.